Hey everyone! Today we're going to be talking about encryption. Encryption and the broader topic of cryptography can sometimes have an intimidating vibe to them. Acronyms and words like AES and ciphertext and MITM get thrown around, and it can be hard to wrap your head around them. Fret not, because today we're going to explain encryption in friendly terms and explore some applications of encryption. For this video, I'm going to assume you have a little bit, just a little bit, of software engineering knowledge. In simple terms, encryption is a technique for scrambling a message so that only the people you want to see the message can see the message. In the ancient days, Julius Caesar used an encryption technique that was later named after him, called the Caesar Cipher. Here's how it works. You take your message, let's say, hello, pick a shift amount, let's go with 5, and shift each letter by that amount in the alphabet to get the scrambled message. To unscramble, you shift in the opposite direction. The four parts of this scheme are that there is a message to scramble, a secret that you have to know to be able to unscramble the message, which is also known as the key, a way to scramble the message, and finally a way to unscramble the message. So why did Julius Caesar do any of this in the first place? Because he didn't want his communications to be read by anyone except the recipient. So if you found the scrambled message without knowing the shift amount or the way it was scrambled, you'd probably think the message is gibberish. And if you try guessing the shift amount and you get it wrong, it'd still be gibberish. Only a person who knows both the scheme and has the right shift amount can understand the message. Being able to hide info so that only certain people can read it is incredibly useful. In the information security world, this property is called confidentiality. If you're curious to learn more about this, you should check out my other video on information security. Incidentally, Caesar Cipher was probably advanced for his time, but it can actually be fairly easily broken with a pen and paper today. You can just try all 26 possible shift amounts until you get non-gibberish. Trying all combinations until you find the right one is known as brute forcing. In modern days, we have much fancier and tougher encryption algorithms, but the core idea is still the same. You put the message and the key through the encryption algorithm to get the scrambled ciphertext, you send it to your recipient, and they put the ciphertext and key through the decryption algorithm to get the original message. If the algorithm is a good one, it is impossible to decrypt the ciphertext without the key. Nowadays, the most well-known encryption algorithm is called Advanced Encryption Standard, but everybody calls it AES. There is currently no publicly known way to decrypt a message without knowing the key. Trying to guess all possible keys by brute forcing is also not possible, as the number of possible keys is kind of in the same numerical ballpark as the number of atoms in our galaxy, roughly speaking. However, even though there is no known direct attack against AES, proper usage of the algorithm proper handling of encrypted data, and proper storage and handling of the key are all crucial to its effectiveness, and the effectiveness of any encryption algorithm. Discussing the first two is a little bit out of the scope of this video, but for a taste of the last one, take a look at my video about hardware security modules. Besides just the algorithms, what's also changed between Caesar's time and ours is the applications for encryption. We now live in a world driven by information, and being able to keep it secret and protected is incredibly important. So let's look now at some applications of encryption, such as web browsing and database encryption. When you browse the internet, all communication between you and the site goes through many intermediate hops, like routers, switches, and other networking hardware. Some of this communication might include sensitive stuff, like your bank password, bank account balances, personal information, or anything else you might want to keep private. Without encryption, anyone who happens to be eavesdropping on the connection between you and the site can see everything that you are sending or receiving. For example, if you sit in a Starbucks, use their public unencrypted Wi-Fi, and browse the internet without encryption, everyone around you can see the data you're sending and receiving, because Wi-Fi radio waves can be ambiently heard by everyone nearby. It's as if you and a friend were shouting across the cafe. Furthermore, a long list of other folks, such as your internet service provider and governments, both domestic and foreign, potentially could also be watching what you're doing and viewing your communications. In security parlance, this category of spying on you is known as Man in the Middle, or MITM for short. Luckily, using Wi-Fi passwords, which encrypt traffic between you and the router, 
and browsing using HTTPS, which encrypts traffic between you and the website you're talking to, are both examples of encryption, which make it impossible or much harder for snoopers to see what you're doing. Just like how Caesar's encryption made it impossible for messengers to read the message that they were delivering because they were not the intended recipient, Modern day encryption makes it impossible or harder for ISPs for other parties to understand the information that they're transmitting for you. Very useful. Let's move on to a second common use of encryption, which is database encryption. When services you use store data about you, they usually insert this data into a database so that later when you visit, they can remember the information that you provided. But what happens when a hacker gets in and steals your database? The answer is a data breach of which there have been hundreds and hundreds of large ones in the past few years. How do you prevent a data breach? Well, one thing that helps, although there are no silver bullets, is database encryption. In database encryption, you use a key to encrypt sensitive information before storing it in your database. That way, if a hacker accesses your database but can't get your key, they can't decrypt any of the sensitive information and it's functionally useless. Many data breaches were actually from major services who neglected to use database encryption to protect their customers' information. That's all I have for you for now. We covered a lot today. The process of encryption, encryption for protecting communication over the internet, and encryption for protecting data in databases. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Feel free to leave questions in the comments as well. Thanks again.